Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 7, Thoughts. This episode is called Chaos Theory. So, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but no spoilers in this video for anything MCU that happened after this episode first premiered. So, let's dive right in. So, yes, we open... Yeah, one of the, the, the very first thing we see and one of the very last things we see is six months ago in Hawaii, May and Andrew. And, yeah, just, like, really breaks your heart when, you know, they were reconnecting and then, you know, the, the, the Terrigen gas in the, in the book, just, yeah. And... Let's see. Yeah, they talk about, you know, the idea of a cure, which is legitimately, you know, I I think they've already done a better job with that on this show than in the, the X-Men The Last Sand. And it is a really compelling idea. You know, this thing of, well, if you could, would you? And is it right to, to just... I mean, essentially, like, the... the arguably a real-life equivalent, and I do think this works extremely well as um, metaf metaphor and such. The real-life equivalent would basically be conversion therapy, which is, you know, torture. Let's not mince words. So, yeah, you know, whether, whether we're talking gay conversion therapy or like forcing, ah crap, I forget if it's called conversion therapy when it's with trans people, but trying to force trans people to, to detransition, you know, these, these kinds of things. So yeah, I, I really appreciate it being brought up here. And Daisy, who's, you know, one of the most ethical characters on the show, being very opposed to it. And, yeah, I, I said it when I talked about last episode as well. Now that we know that Garner is Lash, just phenomenal, like, the the subtle, sinister performance that, that Blair Underwood is is delivering, just really love to see it. He, he does such a great job. Like, it's just subtle enough that you can buy that the, the characters don't realize, you know, oh, hey, he's being really, you know, he's being so sinister, but the, the, it's, it's enough to be really effective, and Andrew says he's going to check in on Joey Gutierrez, so, yeah, very, very tense, great kind of setup, and, you know, you have the line, you know, secrets can really eat you up. And, yeah, so Gemma goes to, to Fitz about the, the phone, if it can be fixed. And, yeah, great device, to, you know, in, in the episode, as, as well as the, the smartphone, that they were able to, to do a lot to, to salvage. But, yeah, Fitz reacting to this this stuff you know really great stuff in this episode with that very very emotional and yeah we see that may did not tell bobby that you know Werner told her about andrew being like a monster you know she claimed oh you know he he went into a coma before we could get any information and, yeah, Bobby tells May about Lash, and, you know, May, of course, realizes, well, that has to be Andrew, based on what Werner said, and she, you know, smartly, she does check to make sure it's not just, you know, going off what some kid said, as Andrew puts it later. And, yeah, Andrew like, imagines killing Joey, and it's very clear, like, he can bear, he can barely restrain himself. So essentially, again, if we're talking, like, symbolism and, and metaphor, essentially, 
Lash is a self-hating LGBTQIA plus individual. You know, there are, sadly, you know, some people who, who fight against LGBTQ plus rights are themselves LGBTQ plus, but yeah, they, they hate themselves and the community so much. So, yeah, great, you know, and, and it is this thing, like, he feels drawn to the Inhumans, but he, like, when when he gets close to one, it's like he can't control himself. He just has to destroy the other Inhumans. So, yeah, really excellent metaphor for self-hating LGBTQIA plus individuals. And, yeah, so they tell me that my fate is in your hands. Which is such a great, because, like, Joey is, like, oh, you know, he's, he's like, pretending. He doesn't think that this guy might kill him. He's, you know, it's a, it's a phrase. It's, he's, he's, he's exaggerating, essentially, you know, but, no, really, his fate is in Lash's hands. Let's see, yeah, and, and, you know, Bobby... <sighs> Yeah, someone, someone making this show has made, yeah, someone who was working on, on these scenes definitely had a crush on Adrian Felicki, which again, fair enough, you know, I, that's, yeah, you know, so she's like shirtless and, you know, Lance comes in, don't put a shirt on on my account, said the writer and then had the character say. And, you know, yeah, he's, he, he says several things, and she, like, smirks and chuckles and such. And after a while, he's like, are you all right? Did they not give you a line for this scene? And so, yeah, Daisy is going to be the one giving Rosalind the, the tour. Um, yeah, great scenes between the two of them, this, this conflict of... You know, because, cause like, seemingly they both, seemingly Rosalind does empathize with Inhumans, but she has a very different idea, and, and it is this sort of, like, federal agency trying to protect people from themselves energy, you know, to her point of view. You know, this thing of, no, no, we have to put them in, in comas in order to, to keep them safe and keep us safe and you know daisy very much being this like you know touch grass kind of person and like no let they're they're human beings we have to treat them like human beings they're inhuman beings and yeah fitz sees will and gemma together and gets very angry and it's it's a great little so like he basically like hits the table he like knocks something off the table and then walks off and then the audio starts playing which yeah like you know he yeah he hits the table with like his hand or something and that like triggers the thing to to you know start playing these these audio so so yeah very very clever and um, just gonna say there we go. Yes. Um, then we have the... Um, what did... Oh, right, right, yes. Uh, Joey has now realized, you know, his powers can be a good thing, not only a, a bad thing. And, yeah, you know, and, and that is, again, like, metaphorically, yeah. He's talking about human potential. You know, we can create or we can destroy. And obviously, if you have superpowers, your ability to do that is significantly higher. But, yeah, the, the you know, if we, if we wanted to, like, universalize it, yeah, you know, some people think we should encourage children to, you know, when they're in school and such, we should encourage anything they they find appealing because maybe down the line it'll be their career or something. Whereas others say, no, it's dangerous because they might be attracted to something 
that you know will will corrupt them in some way so we have to control very tightly everything that they are exposed to and you know i i would say the the truth is somewhere in the middle like obviously children can't you know there's there are things that adults can are are ready to handle that children are not it, yeah i've i've made my stance clear so moving on Let's see. Yeah, uh, Lincoln says, you know, Mac, f you know, helped fight La Lash, so he's not a suspect. And yeah, Lincoln has realized Lash has to be with Shield. I I really appreciate that. You know, yeah, when he's been off screen, because you know he's been on the run for a little while. Yeah, makes a lot of sense for him to go around to. Af Afterlife in humans, and trying to to protect them, and trying to to form, you know, re reform some community, to, you know, safety in numbers, and all this whole this this whole thing. And he keeps, you know, some of them are missing, which I'm I can imagine might, you know, later we'll we'll see exact like some of those might be with the ATCU, but it's possible there's something else going on as well with with some of them, but the the rest are are dead. So, yeah, it has to, you know, and, and he knows about the, the book that Jia Ying had. And, yeah, I, I love when TV shows reveal, oh, you know, while this character was off screen, they were doing this thing. Because it makes perfect sense. It's, it's in character, and it's within his means as well. And... You know, like, let's hypothetically say, oh, you know, while he was off screen for a couple of episodes, he built his own helicarrier. Then I'd be like, what? But it's, it's this makes complete sense. And, yeah, the, the debate between Daisy and, and Rosalind really feels like something out of the X-Men comics or the Fox X-Men films. So, yeah, love to see it. I This is so much more complex than a lot of the movies. And, again, I do love the MCU movies. And and some of it is also that you can do more with more screen time. But again, the X the Fox X Men movies also did some of this really well. And yeah, some of those movies were just much more willing to take risks than the MCU. I really hope that once X Men are in the MCU, that they start really confronting that. In some of the more recent MCU stuff, they have been getting more daring and mature and let's see then we have yeah um may confronts andrew what happened to you you used to be cool man but but yeah great scene very like just some some really emotional stuff here and it's like like if i take a step back i'm like okay i get this is this is kind of melodramatic you know so May knows that her ex is secretly a monster. And, you know, she has, like, it's the thing, I mean, you know, she still has feelings for him, but she has to protect people. And you have this thing of Fitz, you know, he, you know, his, his, the, the girl that he's in love with fell for someone else while they were on another planet for six months. You know, it's, it's completely ridiculous, but just, yeah, I don't know. They did it right. They, they got, they, it's emotionally resonant, in my opinion. Let's see. And... Yeah, I really appreciate... Like, uh, Fitz is really having... You know, he's experiencing some very complex emotions over the stuff on the phone. Because, yeah, there's that picture of Gemma with Will, but you also have these recordings where she's talking about... You know, and, and the part where, you know, she's like, I'm, she, you must have thought I was so annoying. And it's like, no, never... <laughs> This is so sweet. Just, yeah, the, you know, Fitzsimmons have always been adorable, but just, yeah, and, and like, the moment that Gemma said it, like, I could see it in my mind, this, the, the first meeting that, that, you know, and this thing of her constantly following him around, and, and, you know, he, you know, if she had been, like, mean to him, then he would obviously have hated it, but no, you know, she was appreciating his intelligence, and, you know, both of them are attracted to intelligence. 
And let's see. I, I know. Sometimes I'm just, I'm a complete softy when it comes to stuff like this. But just, yeah. It, they're, they're so sweet together. Just love to see it. And, yeah. Um, Andrew ices and then cuffs, you know, abducts and cuffs May. And just, you know, and they start talking, you know, oh, it's it's like instinct. You know, and yeah, Jiaying raked up the the book, and that's where Andrew got the the names of of all these Inhumans. And it yeah, it makes perfect sense because we saw you know back when Jiaying was still alive, she did you know that she she um this is similar to how she approached I can't believe I'm blanking on his name um, but the 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 other Shield guy you know she she broke a crystal to either turn him or kill him and she yeah she knew it's, you know maybe, I guess not 50 50 but there's you know there's some chance he'll live and be inhuman and then she's sure they'll work together she didn't picture lash you know she didn't imagine that there would be a an anti inhuman inhuman serial killer which I, I have to wonder I hope that they do cl like answer it clearly because I can kind of imagine was that maybe something the Kree did as a failsafe? Like, in case we lose control of the Inhumans, we'll make one Inhuman that's going to kill the rest of them. He's he's really powerful. He's driven to kill them. You know, these these just... It makes a lot of sense. You know, that's the kind of thing, if you're okay with experimenting on living beings, yeah, you might make that kind of failsafe just in case. Because the, the Inhumans are difficult to control by themselves, and, you know, understandably, they're, you know, they don't want, they don't like to be controlled. That was very clear in, in Afterlife. And I quite like the reason that he's called Lash is he lashed out. So he... I love a good pun. Because he lashed out like he was, he was reacting in, a, in an aggressive way. But he also became Lash. Lashed out. Like hulked out. You know, just, yeah. Fantastic. Just 10 out of 10 pun. And, yeah, you know, he chose to, to break up with, with May and keep it from her, uh, you know, just, again, melodrama, but it resonates somehow. I, I guess you had to be there, which is also how you describe prison. And I like the chemistry between Phil and, and Rosalind. And based on the post credit scene, now it's like, oh no, you know, this, I feel like this show, if you watch this show, if you're determined to watch this show, and you hate, like, double agent twists, this show will give you nightmare, nightmares. Like, you'll wake up drenched in sweat, like, no, I was sure that character was actually who they said they were, you know, there's just, there's so many double agents, and triple agents even, in the show, and I love it. And, let's see, yeah, and, and Mac accuses Andrew, and they talk about, you know, the reason he can, the reason that Andrew can change back and forth between Lash is that he's not fully transitioned to Inhuman yet. And that thing about, you know, the longer this goes on, the closer you'll get to... The, the person you knew would disappear. Maybe he already has, you know. And he brings up Bahrain, and he's like, no, it was, it was a good thing. And, and yeah, May points out, this isn't you. You would never say this. And, and yeah, you know, based on what we've seen up to this point, yeah, his, his character would never say that. So it really is changing him on a fundamental level, not just, like, physically. And... <laughs> and Phil just slices, you know, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> just... Yeah, that's that's one way to, to, to... Yeah. And, you know, he says, just in case you get any bad ideas, I'm, I didn't come alone. 
Yes, you are both on comms right now. No, seriously, though, great exchange there. And this thing of, like, Lincoln, he's not intending to wait, you know. And, yeah, great fight between Lincoln and Andrew. And it was this point I realized we didn't see Lincoln go, like, full, like, use the, the full breath of his powers last time. Last time, he didn't have as much, like, revenge and hatred in his heart for Lash, you know, so, yeah, he, like, goes full Kamehameha, and, like, yeah, it's, it, he seriously does do a lot to, to take down Lash. We're friends, okay, maybe just acquaintances. And Daisy manages to rescue Rosalind, which makes the betrayal at the end of the episode so heartbreaking. Although, wait, is it possible that she's just stringing along Gideon Malik? That earlier she was completely down with it, but now it's like, I mean, what are you going to say? Like, so this thing we were doing, I think I might have changed my mind. Like, you can't really do that with that kind of situation. So... I really hope so. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I am prepared to, it might not be that. She might be just completely, yeah. Let's see, and, yeah, and I do appreciate, like, yeah, you know, Daisy's like, I didn't know I could do that, but it makes sense, you know, she can affect vibrations, like, a, a fall is a form of vibration, you know, you're, you're moving really fast through the air, and certainly that is what does the, the damage, you know, like, if you, um, it's, it's the fact that it's the, the entire distance at once, you know, if you, like, if, if you, if you, instead of falling, if you jump, like, a hundred times, and, like, cumulatively, cum, cum, together, all put together, that comes to the same distance, but you did it in, in parts, that's not going to hurt you. But this, you know, so, so yeah, the fact that Daisy goes in and interrupts that makes a lot of sense. There's a one bit where, like, Rosalind's face looks kind of goofy. I don't know if it's, like, VFX or the, the acting, but just, it was a little goofy looking, but, you know, it was, a, it was still great, like... You know, I love a good, like, oh, you know, they, they disagree, but now one of them saved the other. That's also the thing, like, Daisy, you know, she says after, I didn't even know I could do that, like, hypothetically, she could have not done something and said, what, I, my powers don't allow me to save me, you know, it's not super speed. And, <laughs> might as well, you know, and, and yeah, May actually talks down Andrew in a scene that really... Like, there's this excellent video by, just, you know, in, in general, excellent YouTuber. I cannot believe I'm blanking on her name, but I will have it momentarily. Let's see. Um, wait, was that long ago? Holy crap. Okay, I feel like I must have accidentally missed it. Let's see. Um... Here we go. Yeah, uh, Rebecca Watson did a recent video called The Hamas Hostage with Stockholm Syndrome. And I I think I'll just put, I'll put the link to that video in the description. Let's see, that should do it. But the short and long, of the, the part that, the reason I bring it up. In that video, she talks about that sometimes female hostages will, like, basically try to talk down some, the, the, yeah, the hostage taker, try to de-escalate the situation. And, yeah, I feel like that's that's what's happening here with the, the added thing of, you know, yeah, May and Andrew know each other. And I love that it works. I really appreciate that it's pointing out, yeah, some situations you try to de-escalate and you know may standing there and really you know opening up and, and saying you know 
I'm I'm sorry, you know, I I broke up because I'm not, you know, I sometimes I wonder why we were together because I'm not as empathetic as you and all these things. And and yeah, you know, bringing Andrew back out of Lash. And then she gets him into the containment by shooting him repeatedly. Like, holy crap. And I love the bit where, like, the, the, I mean, I mean, it was essentially an act. Like, she was, or she was willing to open up, but she wasn't actually, like, thinking, oh, you know, I'll be able to talk him down completely. She was thinking, I'll, I'll talk him down and get him into the containment, you know, pod, and, and that's, you know, but the, the face, like, Ming Na Wen, such great acting on the show. Like, it's, it's, I'm still adjusting to the fact that sometimes Melinda May smiles, but this, this bit of, of, you know, her being really vulnerable right there, and then, you know, going back to badass, raising the gun, firing, you know, and you have the thing of, like, you know, Colson's like, how did you know that wasn't going to kill him? And May's like, I didn't. Badass. And then we have the... I'm just going to say what we're all thinking. He has a hog face. He does have a hog face. <clears throat> and, yeah. Lincoln is going to stick around. Can't be on the run forever. Really looking forward to, to that. Yeah, seeing, seeing more of him working with S.H.I.E.L.D. This, you know, it's, it's, it's this, it's unholy alliance kind of thing because he used to really not trust them at all and yeah Rosalind points out you know if Andrew goes in stasis as a human in, in his human form you know maybe we'll be able to delay the full transition for long enough that a cure is more like it just you know like it sounds it sounds like it makes a lot of sense and yeah Fitz and Simmons you know, talk about, you know, what what do we do now that we've, you know, now that we know that we feel this way about each other. Let's start by watching the sunrise, and then, you know, May watches the sunrise, and we get the thing of, you know, in, in Hawaii six months ago, you know, do I deserve happiness? And Andrew says, we both, you do, we both do. And it's this, you know, if if she does deserve it, she certainly hasn't gotten it yet, you know. And it's yeah, like essentially, she chose to to you know put him in the containment instead of trying. Like hypothetically, you know, if the if the two of them tried to run away together or something, you know, that would maybe her be that would maybe be her trying to prioritize her happiness, their happiness, but she chose duty instead, which is very in character. And we close on Grant talking to Gideon Malik, and yeah, we, we see not long after that, you know, Gideon and Rosalind are working Coulson together, and the, you know, I know, I'm sorry, I I tried, he didn't go for it, I will get Coulson into the ATCU soon, and then Gideon is going to strike, and I suppose it is also, we don't know yet if Rosalind knows that Gideon is Hydra. It is possible that she thinks that he agrees with the ATCU, and that it, so, so, yeah, and... Yeah, makes a lot of sense that Rosalind and Coulson, you know, would get together because it's there's not a lot of people who know exactly the situation that the other one is in, you know, running a, a federal agency and trying to keep secret and, and, you know, they say protect people. I think they're too close to fascism to be honestly protecting people, but that's another thing. But yeah, um, I will close this video with the excellent exchange. Revenge only provides a temporary pleasure, but a pleasure nonetheless.
You should think on a grander scale. Oh, it'll be grand. I'm going to cut off the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. because without Phil Coulson, S.H.I.E.L.D. won't grow back.